This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. Which the one that came in the box? Yeah, yeah that yeah. Dude, you're gonna give me something I spent thirty dollars on. If I can double my profit, it's gone. I don't give a fuck what it is. Nice, sweet. I don't have any attachments. I'm gonna start things. going to Derek's house and pricing stuff out that I really want. Yeah. You can. I'll fucking sell everything I have. I don't care. Yeah, I get weird. I get I get that way. Um, like right now, I'm like I'm having a yard sale in a month maybe, and then somebody's coming in town from. Oh, it's funny. I think it's Michigan. Speaking I, of speaking of Bruce Campbell, and I'm putting a whole bunch of stuff in their store for consignment. I just don't get attached to things, man. I just, it's all just stuff. I like it. I buy it. And I collect it, but it's stuff rachel and i've been going through and like cleaning out our basement yeah. like because there's stuff that's been in boxes since i moved in then it can go like all those invaders m toys yeah i sold one of those figures for 175 dollars yeah yeah I, they, I, I remember when he got yeah. those yeah as soon as it's i like saw that hot topic is it was, I got these for sale for six bucks i'm trying to go to that wrestling show in october and i was like fuck what can i sell I was like, I want to sell some of this autograph shit. Then I'm like, how the fuck am I going to sell autograph shit? Because everybody that's buy it it's gonna, on eBay is going to be like, do you have proof? I'm like, there's a fucking picture of me. That's all I got. Yeah. You don't know me. That so doesn't, doesn't really matter. work anymore. Yeah, you have to get it authenticated. And I'm not going to pay to have it authenticated. So then I started looking at my toys and I was like, I was looking at the shit that's not in a collection. Like, I got wrestling figures. I got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I got like horror shit. But if it's like, how many Night of the Demons things am I ever going to fucking have? You know, I'm never going to have like a Night of the Demons set. So fuck it. And there's a 100% chance they'll re-release that shit in like five years anyway. Yeah, they will. Oh, yeah. NECA's going to be like, oh, yeah, we got this figure we can make again. Now it's a two-pack. Yeah, it'll probably be like a box set. <laughs> you get them all at once. So fuck it. I might as well get my two or three hundred bucks right now and go to this wrestling show I'm going to go to. That looks. That does look pretty cool. Yeah. I'm not even a big fan of wrestling. Yeah, but it's going to be fun. looks pretty cool. And then fuck it. You get all those, all those shows that were supposed to be in Florida. Yeah, I'm excited. Since WrestleMania got canceled because, you know, COVID. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania, there's always a bunch of indie wrestling shows surrounded by it. It's just like a giant party usually. But all those shows that get canceled because Mania got canceled. Well, now they're going to have them all in Indianapolis in October. So I'm going to get fucking tickets to that. And go. Fuck yeah. That's so awesome. it's like a three-day like yeah. wrestling event. Yeah. And it's, gonna, it's not going to be the party that it normally is, but it's those shows. There's a, the Josh Barnett. I saw Josh, Josh Barnett's Barnett. blood sport. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. He, oh, he does a God. Good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Are we recording? Are we already recording? Are we We're on. Good. This Holy. is yeah. This is what we do. <laughs> Fuck! I just got like just got here. I feel like okay. Yeah. We're talking about pro wrestling. You know, have a drink. Fucking. I am gonna need some drinks today. I am hurting. I left your bottle right by your side. My body here. Yeah, my bottle is by my side. Just how my mom used to do me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. His mom just pulled out her boob for me. I was good. My mom did that to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. That's what he made it sound like. No. Oh, fuck. Nah, if she did, I'm not going to tell you. What a bummer. <laughs> oh, for you, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Steven Jordan. Yummy, yummy. Cap off my bad day with that news. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's go to happy things. Oh, God. Holy shit. Everybody. Oh, hang Let's on. talk about Bruce. <laughs> um, Bruce go Campbell. Milk Derek's mom real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, that's a good segue into Bruce Campbell milking my mom. This week we're talking about Bruce Campbell, everybody, uh, and Derek's mom's boobs. Let's not uh, ever do that. Oh god, <laughs> she's gonna Google search this if she's figured out Google, and this is oh, gonna she, be real bad. You think this is the worst thing she's gonna figure out if she ever Google searches you? You're right on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Those, those videos on some of those sites aren't good. Uh, don't Google anybody. <laughs> don't Google me. Don't ever Google yourself. It's one of the oh, weirdest dude. things ever. But I wonder if Bruce Campbell has ever Googled himself. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight is Bruce Lauren Campbell. Wait, what's his middle name? Lauren. Don't say that. I don't well, like Lauren. that. Well, Lauren. Lauren. Yeah. Lauren. I, I say Lauren because, you know, I, I add extra syllables to everything. I'm, I'm an idiot. That's cool. Well, <laughs> it's cool. Then. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm Derek. I'm Steve Vessel. I'm Death Metal Dave. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Do you need a hug or something? He sounds Derek so is in sad. a great mood tonight. I, feel, I love this. I feel like I've been beaten down mentally and physically now. And special guest So let's just Eeyore. jump into Bruce Lauren Campbell's yeah. career. Oh, my God. Born in, uh, what is it, June uh, 19, what the fuck, Dave? 1958. Hell June yeah. 22nd. You have it written down, like, right there. I do. 
Yeah, I, I wrote that down like a week ago. Oh, so you forgot where it was at? I just like, wasn't even looking at the Dave whiteboard. <laughs> in Michigan. I was looking into your eyes and thinking about other things. He's he's older than my mom. I was just, oh, fuck. Oh, Bruce Campbell, yeah. I was like, man, I am not. <laughs> no, you're not. Bruce Campbell is. <laughs> so that, that's something I have going. <laughs> he's, what the fuck? He's almost 70 years old? No, I don't get, I don't do good math. 62. 62. <laughs> yeah, he's not almost 70. He's barely at 60. Yeah, 62 years old. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, June Bur- 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 Bruce Campbell, baby. Happy birthday. Remember, remember. <laughs> Late birthday. It's I know I know it's almost all it's fucking September, October. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? It's June 22nd, and yeah. we're in September. Well, happy, happy belated birthday, Bruce. Oh, man. He didn't. He's not going to hear this anyway. Oh, of and, course not. <laughs> and if he does, it's fucking three months late. <laughs> he, he, I would appreciate it. You would be a shitty friend. I, I, I am sometimes. If I came over here and you're like, happy birthday, Derek. I'm like, oh, that was an August motherfucker. Thanks. It was. And we did. We did do that. Okay. I remember that now. See, I'm redeemed. Yeah, no, you're not. But it's fine. <laughs> so tell me about Bruce Campbell. Fill me in. Fill me out. Fill me in on this guy before he became a star. Well, before it, they were stars. Bruce, Bruce Campbell, Campbell was born in Royal Oak, Michigan. Take it, Dave. I don't know where the fuck that is. That's fine. That, that's all I had. That's just... Is that it? Yeah, he's... He was, born, <laughs> he was born in Michigan. That's all you got? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Just give me a second. Did he work at a motor plant? Oh, my no, God. I mean, they could have. It was in Michigan. I feel like that's where he would do. Do we have to start at the beginning? Uh, we, you know, we don't have to start from like. How far way. is that from Detroit? Good is he point. a big like, ICP fan or is he more of an Eminem guy? I would say Alice Cooper and Iggy Pop, but that's just me. Oh, are those guys also from Detroit? Yeah. Do they say that in their songs? No, I, would, I just know. I would know that. It's like they, they was like an MC5. They would the Detroit the streets. Thing. In their it's, songs. it's 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 down like on the mitten, right there. It's right there. So if you're looking at YouTube, it's it's in the yeah yeah. It's on where, Dave's palm. Where you catch apparently. the ball in the mitten. No, it's it's that's how you Michigan is a mitten. I don't. And you look oh at it. That's God. you point where point to the mitten where where is it really? Is that what yeah? People it do? is. God, I hate this life. I know uh, he dated somebody from Michigan <laughs> once. Do you have any other things about Bruce Campbell besides it's on the fucking mitten? And then he did Evil Jesus Dead. Jesus Christ. Yes, and then he did Evil Dead. No, actually, Evil let's Dead. start this off. In 1977, he, well, he, what, he found, uh, they all found each other. It's Rob Tapper, uh, Scott Spiegel, I think, uh, and Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. They all kind of went to college together, didn't they? Yes. I know the answer to these, but I like teenager. throwing out questions. I know the answers to all this stuff, but yeah. And then uh, they started doing uh, short films, uh, plays and things like that. But one of the first things they did was, I think it's called It's Murder. And he had a small role, but they just realized they could beat the fuck out of Bruce Campbell. And he was like, all right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Take take 45. Especially in these little short yeah. films when you have no time. It's just like, beat the crap out of him. Let's go to the next scene. And he met him and he met Sam Raimi when he was in high school. Holy fuck, I forgot about Wiley that. Wiley Groves High School. And then he had a Super 8 camera. And that's when they became friends and started making movies. And then they eventually attended... Western Michigan University. Dave, you're obviously reading. I like yeah. the way you're reading. This is how it is. Yeah, I like that they were, they were way smarter than me and my friends. We had a camera and we just jumped off shit and broke bones. And, didn't do any. <laughs> and never became Bruce Campbell's and Sam Ray's. They, they were a different kind of nerd. I guess. Wrestling nerds. I'm pretty fucking jealous of that. Yeah. I should have got better friends. Now I got friends that do podcasts with me. Yeah, it's true. We love you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we said happy birthday to you on your birthday. Nah, fuck that. Okay. And then we talked about my mom's boobs. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. Oh, fuck. Then they uh, they they just kept fucking around. I've seen a, a lot of their- They just kept fucking around. They did. They did. They, uh, I've seen a lot of their short films. Uh, they had a great time. They were really a whole lot of like slapstick comedies. That's cool. Uh, they did, did like a uh, Ra- Raiders of the Lost Art kind of like homage film. It's- How are you watching these? uh vhs most of the time when i was a kid like yeah. the guy who owned uh, a local video store called wild and, Wo- wild and woody woody wild, wild and wild, wild, wild and woody. woody i can't ever speak on these things anymore uh he would just give me vhs all the time he'd give me work prints of vhs of movies i liked or like third generation japanese laser disc things and he was like here check this out and i saw so many little shorts i saw one of the first films they did together we're going to get it right into it's called within the woods and it was the worst i had to like I felt like I was trying to do scramble boobs, talking about scramble boobies a couple episodes ago, just to get this shit to, to be able to see it. Uh, and that's how I saw most of these movies. Yeah, there was a collection, like a, a VHS collection of uh, a lot of Sam Raimi's uh, early movies. Well, shit, I need to find around. that. I've never yeah, had it was, that. It was, just, it was just a tape that I, I've seen a couple times where it would just have several different uh, movies on it, short films. Well, sweet. Well, that seems like something they would cash in on if he has a bunch of short films and old shit just to set, put out a box set. Well, I think Within the Woods is actually on a lot of special features now. Well, Within um, the Woods was uh, shot as a 
way to get people to, to attract actors to make evil dead. investors yeah, yeah and investors. get investors yeah, and it worked uh for the most part they <laughs> they still had to bust a lot of ass that they, they learned that's the great thing about this whole troop of guys this whole group of people uh is they just did it from the ground up they did it their way or they didn't know how else would do it they just got a camera and as much pennies as they could get together apparently i know bruce is always talking about go to dentists you know that's that's where you need to go get your money to get your movies made uh, all the books that we've I've read, I've seen interviews with him over the years. He's like, I don't know, he's always either he's joking or he's being serious. He's like, go to dentists because they have money and they just don't know what to do with it. I'm like, I need to remember that. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, man, thanks for fixing my teeth. You want to make a fucking horror movie? Right, yeah. <laughs> Where a tree rapes people? <laughs> Ugh, that's not until Evil Dead. But yeah, no. that's that, that thing is that within the woods... Uh, it's it's him and uh, and Ellen Sandwes and it's like their roles are reversed where he gets possessed and she's like the, the, the heroine and then she has to fight him off. It's almost just like Evil Dead. It's in the cabin. It's like a little, uh, they're they're a couple and it is everything goes to hell. But they made that little short too, like he's like Dave said to get investors and it worked. Uh, it took it took another couple of years and they finally made Book of the Dead, also known as Evil Dead. Dun dun. Oh, dun, okay. Dun, dun, dun. So that's what Book of the Dead is. I was going to yeah. ask you that. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what the fuck is Book of the Dead, Steve? In 1981, oh, Book of the Dead was released, and uh, uh, this guy named Irving Shapiro actually helped make that movie happen. Um, and he he was integral to uh, getting a lot of people's careers going, and I wish he was still alive, but he was old as fuck back then, so I know he's not alive now. Irving Shapiro. He's probably been dead for a very long time. Yeah, I think he died like in the mid-80s, if not, if not like... Right, at, right after this game. Right, I'm yeah. Like, Fucking peace. Uh, but let's talk about Evil Dead. I mean, we have to talk about Evil Dead. It's I know we have really? so much to talk about, but that's the that's the that's the pin. That's the mm. that's the tack in the fucking in the map right that's, there. That's what a lot that's of people think starts. of. Uh, you know, the, the character of Ashley J. Williams. They, they think of they think of the chainsaw hand. They think of him cutting up his friends, the Necronomicon. They think of Evil Dead too. The fruit sellers. Yeah, sadly that is a thing. Uh and I, I've I always went back and forth with people. <clears throat> Evil Dead is actually my favorite. I think it's the experience. Really? Yeah, I it's the one that I, better. It is a better film. Yeah, but the the experience that you have on that first movie, you see it. Some people yeah, say they yeah. saw Evil Dead two first, and then they went back and saw Evil Dead. They're like, ah, that kind of sucked. I'm like, yeah, I get what you're saying. You can see like the Gordon hose yeah. full of blood spurting off the shoulders and all that. But the the level of craftsmanship they were able to bring to the Tennessee Hills uh, for nothing and made people, everybody's dropping off a set. Nobody wants to come back. There's just, it's just grueling. It's in the wintertime, blood sticking. They have, to, they're literally living in that cabin. It's hell. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nobody's making money. Hell, he didn't make money until like 95. So think about that. Yeah, well, <laughs> then conventions happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of like one of the first times I'd actually even heard of Bruce Campbell was at a weekend of horrors ad in a Fangoria magazine. So good connection there. What year was that? Jesus Christ, 80, 86, God. maybe? Yeah. I was just born. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't reading shit. Yeah. No, it was a bloody best of Fangoria. I think I've mentioned that before. That's crazy. Uh, it, it's, the, it's the Evil Dead uh, iconic one where he's like getting ready to uh, dab somebody with, yeah. the, uh, with, the, with the chainsaw over his head, but he's got both hands because it's Evil Dead, not Evil Dead 2. Uh, yeah. Ted Raimi is uh, this little brother of Sam Raimi, who's like, you know, it's, he's... They, would, would, how do you want to go into the shimps? Because shimps, the, the word shimps and the use of that term in their... And their films is extremely important. Dave, hit me. Oh, you just caught me off guard. What oh, shit. Okay, well, the fake ship. He was looking at porn. And I was looking at Dave porn. was looking at Bruce Campbell porn on the tablet. Uh, the fake ship is if anybody who's a Bruce Campbell Somebody's fan gonna... or even a Sam Raimi fan knows. It's like something that they would each call themselves when they, they have to do a role that they're not actually supposed to be in. So say Evil Dead, when Cheryl is all zombified, a lot of those times it's actually Ted Raimi in makeup. Um, he also did uh, Henrietta in Evil Dead 2. We'll get to that. But uh, – and – just had different people doing different things all the time. They were all of camera. It's, it's kind of like the same stories you hear from Halloween where everyone's a grip. Everyone's an actor. Everyone is, is shooting blood in somebody's face or oatmeal. The stop motion is, is actually really freaking good for that time for no budget. There's so many people who worked on that film, including Joe uh, LaDuca, who did the music from Evil Dead 1 all the way up to now. Ash vs. Evil Dead. So yeah. people have bonded through, over this film. They blood, sweat, and tears, the whole story, and it, it, that made those friendships last forever, and they still kick Bruce Campbell's ass to this day. The same people. <laughs> Even though he's the boss now. So you're saying you like this movie not because of the movie, but because of the suffering that went into making the movie. No, it's about knowing how awesome that film was before I even saw it. Like, yeah. I, that's what you did. You read about it. You're like, holy fuck, this sounds like hell. And then you actually go rent it with your friends, and then you're, it, it actually lives up yeah. to 
what you thought it was going to be at that time. We were, I remember hiding behind the sofa and we're all freaking out over all the effects because it wasn't supposed to be a comedy. And people go back and, and kind of like rewrite their own memory of like, it How wasn't that funny. Evil Dead Part 1 has any comedy. Evil Dead 1 wasn't, wasn't it, a comedy. It's, it's definitely not. totally different feel. Like if somebody watches There's some Evil levity Dead, to it. If somebody watches Evil Dead 2 first, they think it's funny because it's the same movie for the most part. Oh, as yeah. The first one just with more comedy, more laughs, more slapstick. Right. Way um, more slapstick. Yeah. And, oh, hell yeah. Implied. It's supposed to be. They're huge Stooges fans, and it's in a lot of their films. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, that whole like uh, that long nod, Dave, just it was great for radio. <laughs> <laughs> you were right, Steve. You're right, Steve. You're right, oh, Steve. You Good job, lie. Steve. Well, I mean, I could go yeah. on uh, until you're, whatever you guys want to jump into. We've got. Well, just name off some of the films he helped work on. He did uh, after Evil Dead. He didn't do a lot of things. He had to actually go back and get real jobs. Most of them all did. Nobody made me money off this film. It wasn't a big hit until it hit VHS, and they were able to get that one fucking quote from Stephen King and put it on the cover. It's on the movie poster behind your head. It's just like, it's so fucking important how much that sold that film for them. And they talk about it and they can't not talk about it because yeah. it's, the, it's like, oh, Stephen King likes this. That's that guy that did Cujo. The most ferociously you know? original horror film of the year. Right. Stephen King. That Did he mean it, though? <laughs> Probably. Okay. Yeah. Stephen King seems like the kind of person that says what he means. I don't know, man. I see his name on some shit these days and I'm like, did you watch it? Really? Don't fucking lie yeah, to me, Steven. Yeah, we, we do things for our friends, though, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> another, Fuck never. Another thing about Evil Dead is that, uh, I think we mentioned this before, but when it came out, it originally had the NC-17 rating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was it, for, for all the gore and how they got it into theaters and grindhouses. Was well, the, I mean, it wasn't. I don't think it was NC seventeen wasn't invented back then, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, it, it wasn't. Was, they had it they, was X. Yeah, it was it was an X rated yeah. because of all the gore. So they basically what they did is they went and cut the R rating off of another film and just tagged it on that and then took it to theaters. Yeah, and that that totally yeah. <laughs> that's so fucking punk rock. I know. They were still and showing that movie into the '90s too in movie theaters. I remember like on radio spots for it, like at midnight showings at Evil Dead at like Dixie Dozen and different places like that in Louisville. Well, so, that, that, that is a way, weird fucking thing. That is a way that they help to try to get people to see it. Almost kind of like the roadshow thing. Yeah. Is they would put it on double bills with Night of Living Dead, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I know, but this That's is... That's real shit that you can go find those old-fashioned... Yeah. Or even, like you said, in the 90s. This is like 15 years after it came out. That's that fucking They rad. would play it. Like yeah. There would be radio spots for it. Like, see one of the scariest movies of all time. Midnight only. Yeah. And it would be Evil Dead. And I'm like, that's fucking bizarre. But yeah. maybe that was just like a... Maybe I was young and didn't realize it was just like a big push for whatever the fifth or sixth VHS release of that fucking movie. Oh, yeah. That's the Anchor Bay treatment, as I like to call it. We'll get to that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we go over every, every Evil Dead release, that would take a lifetime. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so so with Bruce, right after Evil Dead, what was his next starring role? Starring role? Seriously, uh, he got cut out of... Well, there's, two, there's a couple of different stories. Crime Wave came out after that uh he did like a little uh, a, a fake trailer for blood symbol to help get their film made because they were actually film friends uh with the coens and coens were really really looked up to sam raimi uh back then and so he was like fuck i'll help you do whatever the hell you want to do so they made that this little trailer for blood simple that actually got the film made and then they made crime wave which is a comedy film and it's uh it's about crime <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like the johnny dangerously with no fucking budget whatsoever if they didn't have that name already point break would have probably been called crime, crime wave. wave yeah uh but if you listen to two different stories there's one where he they filmed half the movie and then they had to refilm it with a different character and, his, and they pretty much cut all of his roles out or there's another story that i read that he just didn't the the producers were like no he this guy he yeah. can't act so they didn't even film those scenes, but I've, I've read both. And he I've couldn't read... act, though. No, and when he does try, I really appreciate Back then, it. Back it's really bad. If you listen to any interview with Bruce Campbell, he talks about like Evil Dead, how like he doesn't like going back and watching it because how bad of an actor he was at the time. And yeah. he constantly talks about that. He's like, it took me about 15 years to figure this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> like you do. And I'm like, I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty about but it. But he can take too. a brick to the face, so they were willing to forgive Yeah, him. that's important. I can take a brick to the face. Nobody fucking hired me. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I, I would totally hire you, Derek. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. Here I am. Uh, and then we go from Crime Wave right into Evil Dead 2. 
Really? That that was it? Just fucking crying? Yeah. Well, I mean, he did and some short short he, films. He, he and... did some bit parts and things some like that. Yeah. Well, we talk, yeah. If we talk about the king of bit parts, we'll be here for three yeah. hours. Well, Dave said he did some short short well, films. I didn't know shorts. if he did yeah. short films or short short films. Well, it's just shorts. It's a shorts. Uh, okay, he did shorts. Uh, yeah, shorts. Yeah, I like Toro, like Toro, 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 Toro. That's a uh, Generations, a TV series. Toro, Toro, Toro's an anime. Well, Generations was an actual soap opera he did Isn't it? right after Evil Dead no, it was uh, in his series. local area. Oh, soap uh, was like, yeah. Let me see. Cleveland Smith, Bounty Hunter. That I sounds really, awesome. I really want to see that. I'd watch that. Uh, then a uh, movie Going Back, and then Crime Wave, and then you have Thou Shalt Not Kill Except, which he was uncredited for. Yeah, I don't like any Sam of Sam Raimi's list. in that film, too. How did we get to Evil Dead 2? That's did they, where we go. Did they have a meeting and go like, hey, let's just remake part one, but make it zanier? Is that what happened? You know, there's that's another thing. I've read Sam Raimi's accounts. I've read Bruce Campbell's. What's up. Sam Raimi's accounts? Look at the truth. Uh, <laughs> Not with Bruce Campbell. Nobody's making us. money. Nobody's doing anything. Yeah. Crime Wave was a massive bomb. Uh, he, he really wanted that to be something, and he put a lot of heart into it. If you ever get a chance to watch Crime Wave, you should. It's really zany. It's over the top. Yeah. It, it, it encompasses a lot of the things that he would able be able to do in other films. Um, so Evil Dead. He's like, fuck it. Let's make Evil Dead too. And but, they actually got a budget. But was his idea, let's just remake the first one, or is this actually supposed to be a sequel? Now, that's a little bit different. Here, The the, the story that I read, and this must have been, no, he was actually at a convention that Bruce Campbell was at, and he talked about that they that Sam just could not get the rights, because he was trying to do the beginning yeah. of the film. So he basically could not get the rights to the original film. You know, it's his fucking film, but it happens all the time. So he just remade the whole beginning over again. Yeah. With Bridget Fonda, and, and, that's, and then it leads right into that. It's just really weird that they did that because it's the same movie, essentially. Mm -hmm. Especially with Bruce. The first 20 minutes, it definitely is. Because Bruce is the same character, so he should be well aware (laughs) of what the hell's going on. Yeah. It would have been better if he, like, walked in the room. He's like, I hate this bitch. I'm going to take her to this cabin and murder the shit out of her. Then I'm like, oh, this makes makes sense now. (laughs) This makes a lot of sense. But I'm like, why do you take this woman you love to this cabin that you know bad things happen? It's because he doesn't know bad things happen. Because part one didn't ever happen. So it's like a reboot, right? It's not really a part two. Ah, nice. It's, a, it's its own reboot. It's its own, it's its reboot. own reboot. I mean, what yeah. else could it be? It can't be a sequel. So we can get it back. The first yeah, one it, ever happened. It's the same film up to like when the evil dead comes through the house yeah. and then takes him back to the back and then he hits the tree and then he wakes up and he's evil and, the, and then that's when the new movie pretty much starts. Yeah. Even the tree scene comes back. Yeah. But they made it. They made it wacky and fun uh, this time. Yeah. I like how we skipped over that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, that's for a different day. We'll probably talk about this whole franchise one day. But yeah, they made it like kind of goofy. You know, it's it's funny in a way this time around. Toss oh, it yeah. around. It's not some weird, creepy thing chasing her, and it's not a it's not a horny tree this time. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like we kind of skipped over tree. that part. Yeah. yeah, it's not a maple tree this time. <laughs> <laughs> Good observation, Derek. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so, so like I said, we won't we won't dwell too much on Evil Dead too because we'll probably go over. We'll these cover this depth. franchise yeah, one day eventually. But from there, he goes. He was on not, uh, uh, an episode of Knott's Landing, apparently. Oh, my God. <clears throat> what the gonna, fuck's that? Knott's nope. Landing. People don't know what the fuck you're talking about, even though I do. It was my mom's favorite. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, oh, fuck you. I'm not talking about Knott's Landing. Mom, why would I know <laughs> what you're... Show sure your Knott's Landing to Maniac Nuts. Cop. <laughs> <laughs> Which I watched. I rewatched that one last night, and it was, it was, it was weird uh, because there's a big scene in Maniac Cop before Bruce Campbell was even really in it, and... Um, yeah, it's just a bunch of people. They're interviewing people about this crazy cop that's out there killing people. And everybody's like, I don't fucking trust the police. Oh, I'll tell no. you at any moment. I'm like, am I watching the fucking news? Yeah, you like, are. No, I'm watching a movie that, was, that was made in 88. Uh, the thing, the, he had a bit part. I mean, it's not a bit part. Hell, he's the sidekick in Maniac Cop. Yeah, it's not a bit part. We he's talked like, about, I mean, yeah, I mean, we talked about this director in another episode of uh, uh, Bill Lustig, and he made the original Maniac. So it's funny that when uh, I first heard of Maniac Cop, I was like, what the fuck? What's going on here? Is it like Maniac? I had no idea what the hell he I was He was getting for. on the police academy craze. Is that what you were I, I didn't know what to expect. It was one of those uh, things we talked about before. Like, it's just the box. I'm like, I'm going to. Yeah. Fucking no, check you, this yeah, out. You had to get, yeah, the box sells that movie. Hell yeah, it does. And also, who was who's the maniac cop in it? Uh, Robert Zadar. Right? Rob Zadar. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say the dead guy, but there's so many the dead people these days. The chin, the chin the of chin. horror. That's the weirdest looking dude. Yeah, was he in Tango and Cash? And he's you like broke, one of the villains in broke Tango. That jaw? Yeah, yeah, you broke <laughs> that jaw. Are you fucking talking about Conan? Is he in Samurai Cop? Yeah. I think, oh, that's, yeah. I think that's his most well known. He goes from Maniac Cop to Samurai Cop. I really appreciate that about him. Yeah, he's very diverse. Yeah. 
Just like Liz Swig and his like make maniac, and now I'm gonna make maniac cop. <laughs> I wish he would just like his whole career just adding a word. Yeah, just interchanging like the term. Maniac, maniac, evil maniac, dead cop, cop, ice cream, maniac yeah. cop, ice cream movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, stop. <laughs> Uh, he's got like bit parts in the intruder. It's not like anything real, but uh, that's definitely a movie people should check out. I liked it. It's not as graphic as they wanted it. I think a lot of the stuff got cut that's out. The people stranded in like the shopping yeah. place or the grocery yeah, it's store. Got Danny right? Hicks in it. Um, yeah, I didn't like that one. Oh man, uh, I, it's one of those. Maybe I should go back and watch it. I saw I, it in the Gorezone magazine. I bought it on like Blu-ray when they did that re-release. What like eight or nine years ago? Mm -hmm. And. I just was like, fuck this, man. You're probably expecting something totally different. No, I don't ever have expectations anymore. That's at this even point better. In my life. <laughs> I've learned over the years not to have expectations, especially when they're like, oh, and featuring Bruce Campbell. And I'm like, oh, he's going to be in it for fucking three minutes. Yeah, or a voiceover, like a in voice the dead next door or something. Yeah. No, it's not bad. If I would have saw it in 87, I'd probably like it more than I did seeing it in 2012. Oh, definitely. So, uh, it's it's got that things. vibe, yeah. yeah. It looks good. It shot well. It's a, it's a, a Scott Spiegel production, which is one of their friends. They they didn't really work with him much after this. They worked with him a few more times, but not like it's not the same crew like yeah. Rob Tappert and Sam Raimi, Ted Raimi. It's not like that family of people. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's marketed as that though. Oh, absolutely. Like on DVD and Blu-ray, it's totally marketed as like from the people that brought you Evil Dead. The creators. Yeah, the creators. <laughs> from the executive producer in the key grip. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> they do that all the time yeah, oh my god the from the producer there's like 12 producers on the fucking ring, oh dude man. every movie does yeah. that now i can't if i go to walmart and look at dvds they're like eli roth touched this movie yeah. once he winked at somebody on the set didn't it? it's an eli roth production now. from the guy that brought quentin tarantino coffee <laughs> put a booger in it they're like dude taste yes. the booger flavor we'll put anyone's name on this shit that's why i got a question to sell stephen king quote bullshit yeah, did they pay him in uh, coffee? Did they pay him? <laughs> did Sam Raimi give him a handy? Maybe. These are the questions we're going to answer, but not tonight. Don't take those to the grave. We'll never know. <laughs> that movie after Intruder, that looks like that says Moon Trap Ray Rob Dyke. Okay, so and what I did like a on lot the, of words on the, on the whiteboard of Doom, it's got I put their I put them film that I like to talk about. It has the character he played and it has the director. Oh, okay, so that's all together. Bob Dyke is the director. Oh. Robert Dyke. So it's not called Moon, Moon Trap Ray Bob Dyke. <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. I want to see that porno. <laughs> that sounds Moon ridiculous. Trap Bob Dyke. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> I don't care about this movie anymore. Now I'm let down. What's Moon Trap? Moon Trap is the it's it's when he was really like we're talking about trying to. Um, Trying to actually act, learn how to act, learn the craft. Ooh. He chose, he chose a movie called Moon Trap to do that. Yeah. Oh, fuck this was yeah. the film where he good, decided good. to stop actually being, I think he was a security guard uh, for like a, for like a beer company up to the, cause really? he wasn't making any money. Yeah. He always, you know, it's, well, it's, yeah. you know how it is. Indie filmmaking, you, you're you done. You have to go back to your job. See, I thought Evil Dead 2 made money. Yeah, but he didn't make and shit. And Maniac Cop. Oh, yeah. he didn't make shit? No. Just Sam Raimi just balling? I don't know. I never asked. <laughs> Sam Raimi's balling. Probably gave it all to Ted. He has to keep fixing the Delta, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, that thing, man. We haven't even talked about that yet. The old Delta. Dave, you want to talk about that? Oh, uh, Sam Raimi's Delta 88 that's in all of his movies. All of them. All of them? All of them. Well, all we've debated them. that. No, 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 no. Bruce Campbell confirmed that in The Quick and the Dead, oh, they man. stripped it down to the frame and put a horse carriage over it. Oh, they had the budget to do that? I need to look that up. That's hey. a pretty expensive yeah, looking movie. Was, hey, Sharon Stone. Oh, I know. I know. She's like the producer. And she made that film happen. Leonardo she, DiCaprio. Yeah. But it, that's like during his growing pains and Critters years. So mm -hmm. maybe not so much. No, because he already did Gilbert Grape. I thought he did like Basketball Diaries at that mm -hmm. point or something. Yeah. I don't know what Basketball Diaries is about. Oh, it'll make no. you cry. No. no, it won't. It's got Mark, It's got Marky Mark in it, so <laughs> you might no like soul. it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to make you cry. But it'll we'll make you cry. <laughs> um, let's see. Moon Trap. Moon Trap he did with Walter Koenig, who actually played Chekhov in Star Trek. So it had his star power behind it. They actually had a budget. Um, who? Who's star power? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Chekhov. I Nuclear know. vessels. <laughs> This is the eight. Oh, Derek still is like, who? Star like, Trek, baby. He's just screaming this nerdy shit at me. Oh, God. It's a, where oh, they man. go to the moon, and the moon It's has good that we do this in, in a basement in it's, your spot. This is where you belong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Star Trek <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> uh, it's a good film. You should check it out. It's It actually has a budget. It's got uh, good effects. Uh, he's actually 
really trying to act like he did in the, in the Maniac Cop movies. When you're when you're acting with fucking uh, Tom Atkins, you got to pull out all the stops, baby. But he's not in this film. Why? No one else ever fucking did. <laughs> it was a Tom Atkins movie. Pull out all the stops. Tom Atkins is the sh- Tom just has to be Tom. I love Tom. Tom's just an old badass. Yeah. He's been old his whole life. He's been a badass. Yeah, he's like the life. Tim Thomerson <laughs> of the yeah, Halloween exactly. movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. John Tim Carpenter Thomerson. movies. Yeah. That's a callback to the full moon days. Tim Thomerson is the star of Dollman, for those that give a fuck. Yeah, go check out our, our full moon episode. So everybody's like, who's Tim Thomerson? Probably the same reaction they had to that fucking Star Trek reference. <laughs> Besides a couple of white knuckled nerds right now that want to jump me, but you can't because your mom won't let you. Oh <laughs> my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, like <laughs> fuck, man. You know what? We're gonna, uh, let's just move on from let's mention some apparently. of these. The Dead Next Door. We talked about. I don't that. know what that is. He got okay. It's a low budget film. I actually really enjoyed it. It's a zombie film. Before you got sick of zombie films, uh, and he's on the fucking. The, the, his name was on the box, the VHS, yeah. the Blu-ray. It, oh, he does like a voice. So they like Michael Madsen did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think maybe they took one of his old television shows and put it on a, on a on a television in the background. They did that a lot with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, and his his, his character's name was Ramy. Ah, oh, forgot about that. Oh, crafty fucks. Yeah. And then you go on to Man- Maniac Cop 2. I'm which done. I don't, Well, he wasn't even in that one very well. Hell yeah. He, he, he does die. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, what, like 10 minutes in? You should still check it out, man. Bill Lustig rules. <laughs> really, what you should do is fast forward to the end credits and just listen to that wonderful, wonderful Maniac Cop 2 rap song. Yeah, it's one of Derek's favorites. It is. A, it's an all-time 80s favorite. Can you recite it real quick? I'm not going to do that. Unless you guys get, will you make me a mixtape of all your favorite bucks. '80s movie rap I got ten. songs? Dave, Dave, money. He's I do. I have that actually. I have a, <laughs> I have a mix. That one hundred percent. Oh, all we gotta get that mix. Movies, rap We're songs. gonna release it on the Gore Club page. It's very much a real thing. It's a very sad thing. It's oh. Probably worse than being a Trekkie. Actually, is that I do that? Fuck. Oh. I am a Trekkie, so whatever. But Hit me with your if bullshit. You, if you're, uh, if you have access to YouTube, which surely you do, if you're listening to this, just type in Maniac Cop Two rap and have a fun time. You don't even have to watch the fucking movie. It's going to tell you everything. It's true. Yeah, this is, it's so descriptive. It's just a complete recap. Yeah, it's a real descriptive rap about the movie, and it's it's brilliant. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, Cup Two is a, is an upgrade from the first film. It's it's everything looks better. Everything sounds better. The acting's better. The makeup effects are better. Yeah, I mean, you know, and they kill Bruce Campbell. And that's is that better though? Robert yes. Sadar's chin Fuck. looks better. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, you know, looking back, it probably wasn't unexpected when that movie came out. But for me, when by the time I watched it and they killed him, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was hot. But I wasn't prepared for that. Kill Bruce Campbell. Yeah, they do. I thought about this one. He would have been the actual fucking hero hero. And uh, no, he's not. He's, he probably had other shit to do, well, right? Hundra. What else the... came out that year? Uh, <laughs> 1990. Dark Man. Dark Man. So right. he was doing Dark Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, well, sort of. Yeah. He was the final ship. I always. Which, yeah, there you go. His ship. Yeah. The board ship comes back. I always argue with people. I was like, no, motherfucker, he is Dark Man. He kind of is Dark Man. Yeah, at the end. I'm going to spoil it for you because I don't give a fuck. Dark Man was Sam Raimi's. I've uh, seen Dark Man. Yeah. And I've seen all the way to what? Die, Dark Man, die. Yeah. Right, all the sequels, yeah. See, I know shit sometimes. That's part three. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I said. I've seen it all the way up to yeah. who died. I don't know. Is there a four? No, there should be, though. How many are is Bruce Campbell in? Just the first one. Well, let's stop there, then. Okay. That's all we got to talk about. What's he doing? It. What's he doing after that? Well, no, no, no. What's he doing, what's he doing in it? it? He does it. He, he literally looks over his shoulder and gives us the old Bruce Campbell wink. That's all we get from him. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Like the end credits of the Evil Dead reboot. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> That's probably up there somewhere. He's got, a, he's got a way with things, right? He can do yeah. whatever the fuck he wants. Have either one of you seen Mind Warp? Uh, no. Remember, I, I came in here and I, the first thing I said to you today was, <laughs> What the fuck's this? And you said it's Mind Warp. And I went, hey, I haven't seen that. I couldn't remember if that was mind, uh, Moon Trap or Mind Warp, but you haven't seen either one. No, I haven't I haven't seen Mind Warp because every time I've rented it, I've never found it on VH or on anything other than VHS. And I gave up years ago because every time I rented it, the tape was fucked up. Well, I'm going to let you borrow my copy. Oh. He said it doesn't have any titties in it. And that's okay. I'm sorry. I was just shocked by that. <laughs> <laughs> Name a Bruce Campbell movie that has boobies. Name one? Let's go to this board dun, here. Dun, 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 dun. Evil Dead 2. I don't really. Yeah, you got me. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah. Evil Dead 2. I was trying to find <laughs> one outside fake. of the Evil Dead They're world. like rubbery zombie boobies. Yeah, but still. I'm true. pretty sure Escape from L.A. has tits. 
It has to have tits, right? Does it not have tits? Mm, mm. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not Google searching that. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Campbell movies. And then it'll be a fucking no, Photoshop no. version of God. like what Derek does with our heads for the ads. People listen to this like, this guy just cares about boobs. No, not really. It's just like when I sat down and saw this movie cover and the way it's presented, it's just very much focused on that lady on the cover there. And I'm like, oh, surely that's a boob <laughs> film. And it's not. It's just about her mind. That's yeah. very pro- it's a very progressive movie. It's a very yeah, progressive movie. I appreciate that. It's a 1990 uh, post apocalyptic film uh, with Angus Grimm, Bruce Campbell. Um, I forgot the damn. What year is it set in? 1990. Oh, oh the, where a, is it set? Oh shit! Oh set fuck! I don't think it actually tells you. Okay, the like, near future. You know I always like that. Mad Max time. Yeah. 1999. No. Oh, God, we're all 20, so fucked. 2037. So we're close. God damn! Oh, it's shit, actually close, yeah. really it's it's still in that time period where he's trying not to be Bruce Campbell. He's an actor. He's the hero. His name's Stover. Um, and it's got cannibals. It's got uh, it's it's actually really bleak. There's no special like there's no visual effects. So they filmed it in in I think they filmed it in uh, Michigan uh, on the it's like sand and they have all the this, the fucking production value they got out of that fucking area is amazing. There's like snow everywhere, but they're still on the beach. It's really crazy. The actors had to be in the icy water. It's can it's like a cannibal post apocalyptic fucking movie. Bruce Campbell, check the fuck out. Check it out. No, we're just wait seventeen years. You did just sell me on that, but or yeah, you just wait seventeen, like 17 years for the real thing. And it's also one of the very first Fangoria magazine uh, films they ever produced and made themselves. Uh, they only did like three at the time. I think they've come back, you know, in the D- in the Blu-ray w- world. But it's Fangoria Films made that movie. Yeah, I don't know what happened with them though, because everybody left that company this year. Oh shit! Apparently, they did some like really shitty stuff because like Adam <sighs> Green, all those guys left that their podcast network because of how they were treating people on set of their films. Holy fuck. Yeah. So I think I don't they released know. another press uh, press release the other day about how they're back. I don't know. They're back. I they're do. back after everyone told them to fuck off. Yeah. I mean, literally oh, like every, Ellen. Like they, fucking, they, they hired a bunch of new people, I guess. I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah. Because like every filmmaker quit their like podcast network and shit. Holy and fuck. So they weren't going to work for them anymore. After something was released about how they were treating people on set. It wasn't just like one incident. It was like multiple fucking times. Some wow. Shit I don't know the details, so I'm not going to like bash or anything, but. You just reminded me when you said Fangoria's Holy back, shit. right? And I'm That's like, funny. Oh, not really, because well, they kind of fucked up. Talking about that, it's like, like I said, I was making a joke. It sounds like Ellen. Yeah. He was actually on the show Ellen, not the show that's now, but you know the the show, the television show that she had. Oh, the comedy. Yeah, show, I guess she did. Bruce Campbell was. Yeah. yeah. Why? <laughs> Why not? Pay the bills. What did, um, he, what did he play on there? I don't remember. I never actually watched it. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, it wasn't my Bruce Campbell man. Yeah, you he's really, not covered in blood and. And there's no boobs in it. Speaking of being covered in blood, that's we're getting close. We hit Army, of Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness is 92. It's the same year. That's, that's right. the first Bruce Campbell movie I saw. Yeah, for sure, because that was on TV a lot. That was the and first one that I saw in out of the Evil Dead series. I went to the drive-in. My mother took us on Fridays, and it's just whatever was playing. That's what we watched. And Army of Darkness played that night, and that's when the drive-in would do. Uh, they do two movies, but they would show the first movie. Twice, they show it Ooh. after the second movie. Oh, okay, I'm like, and what? I, well, they show they show the first movie, show the second movie, and then show the first movie again. And uh, like, I was I was amazed. I'd never seen anything like this. You know, I'm like, I was like 11 at the time. Yeah. So perfect just, timing. Yeah, it's just it was just so amazing because I love like Dungeons and Dragons and shit like that. No. And then blood and gore, and rubber monster suits. So. Yeah, I was really stoked. I watched it twice that night. I, I told my mom, I was like, we can't leave. I sat in front of the car until like, you know, like, what was it, like three in the morning watching this on this giant screen. And then it all started from there. I had to figure it out. And that's when I went and got yeah. rented the Evil Dead movies when I could find them and started going down the Bruce Campbell like rabbit hole trying to find more stuff from this guy. Yeah. See, I didn't get to see it at the movies. I feel like maybe I probably saw it like 95, 96 because it was on TV all the fucking time and i'd catch like bits and pieces of it then i finally watched the whole thing had no idea it was connected to a trilogy until i bought i bought evil dead on vhs when i was probably like maybe 11 or 12 and then i got evil dead too and then i realized oh fuck it's the same guy once oh, he puts he's got that the, chainsaw on, he's got yeah. the same name oh, it, oh and then the ending for evil dead 2 happened in that fucking click i'm like oh okay cool so, <laughs> it all makes sense and that's why i like that movie more than steve does 
Yeah, I think we've heard. Which my we story talked about, about that last yeah. well, last week enough of you. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, bitching and crying. I wasn't and bitching and crying. I don't like when I things was... are funny. I hate fun. <laughs> things got to be really fucking serious. Like, yeah, that's me. I'm all about serious. I'm he so was... I'm so sad that I missed this. He was mad, man. It was no. It was rough. It was I was good. recounting my. Uh, it got really tense in here because he was just like, don't, "I was gonna start swinging." Don't talk about Army of Darkness in front of me. <laughs> they ruined <laughs> Evil Dead. True. You gotta understand that Evil Dead was in my Fangoria catalogs, and it was so crazy. And then Army of Darkness comes out, and it's all whoop de whoop de boo. <laughs> That's exactly how he said he it. Was, I just, oh I just imagined. God. He was mad. Go back and listen to the episode so you guys can like compare what I just did to what he said. That's pretty much spot on, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so well, from, well, from from the from there, we had uh, looks like we had some some bit parts. Yeah, bit parts. The, I, yeah. He, did, he is the king of bit parts. You can run it through him. What's uh, the one where he's working in like there's like a newspaper company or some shit? That's the Hudsucker proxy. The Hudsucker. Like, yeah, that's a Coen Brothers movie. His name's like Fozzie or Fizzy, something like that on there, and he plays a really good small role in it. Yeah. So Smitty. Like, Smitty. Smitty. I know it. Would you pull it up? Nice one, Dave. Fozzy, Fitty, Smitty. There it's, we go. It's Fitty. Yeah. Fitty. <laughs> he plays like a small role, but he, he's really good on there. He's got the dialogue solid. Uh, Congo? Yeah. Yep. He is the Laura Lenny's character. That's her husband. That's, re- that's the reason she's going in to uh, the, the place really? to get him. Yeah. Fuck, I haven't watched Congo in so long. Yeah, his biggest part of that is him screaming at the camera going, no. And that's it. No, we, we talk about a lot of these bit parts. We have to talk about what he was doing. While he was doing these bed parts in '93, Heroin. Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Oh yeah, we have to get that. He <clears throat> would we'll interject the uh, the TV roles. Yeah, because then he did a lot of a lot of television in the '90s, um, a lot of television. Uh, but Briscoe County Jr. For those of you that are not familiar with it, it's a sci-fi western. Sci-fi western. Horror sometimes. Okay, it's, yeah, it it's is. all over the place. So yeah. if you've seen Firefly, reverse Firefly. Yeah, that's, well, that's perfect. Wow. Okay. There you Nicely go. done, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Briscoe County Jr. Uh, you know, it's brilliant about that. Bruce Campbell had to audition five times for that fucking movie. Yeah. Show. They, I mean, nobody ever wants crazy. him in like real mainstream things. I'm like, fuck, he's perfect for this fucking role. He was amazing. I love that show so much. I, I bought like the shitty box set they came out for oh, the it. DVD set. Got, oh, I've got yeah, it too. Yeah, like the half ass DVD yeah, set. Yeah, it's upstairs. Uh, I love the writing. The dialogue's great. He. I mean, if you've never seen it, essentially he's Briscoe County Jr. It's an old West thing. His dad gets killed. He's there to like fucking do what his dad was doing as a job, which was what? What the fuck are they like? It's like some They're kind of weird, hunter. those power stones yeah, and shit get orbs. out. Orbs. Yeah, those orbs get out. And then there's like this bad guy named Lord Bowler, which I love that. Like the first Julius Jul- show enough carry, baby. Carry. Who's no longer with us. Right. Uh, but when he shows up, it's a brilliant scene because he sets out this table of Bruce Campbell with a stick of fucking dynamite, thinking he's gonna like show him up. And Campbell just sits there and orders fucking breakfast while this this wick is just burning, about to blow the whole fucking place up. And of course, old Julius snaps before he does yeah. and fucking cuts the wick. And then they become kind of buddies off and on. They're like rival series. buddies. Like yeah, one of those weird things you see on like. Comedy yeah. shows. John Aston was in the show. Billy Drago. I, Tons of people. Yeah, Comet Dra- the horse. Drago's our other dead person from the show. Yeah, we touched on him a couple episodes ago. Uh, Billy Drago is awesome, and he plays the same kind of character that he does in the Trimmers. There, he's just that old West fucking asshole type guy. Yeah, that's how we actually. That's how we touched upon him is because we're like, wow, it's like an episode of uh, uh, Briscoe County Junior mm-hmm. with uh, Graboids. They Have had you- uh, the other character. He had villain Pete. Which was that really stupid cowboy that was always feuding with him, and that dude has like tons of great one-liners. But they, I don't know if you remember him at all, but they kill him in the first episode, and they liked him so much that they bring him back and they use him for like the rest of the series. Which this this show, like Firefly, went one season as well. It's literally just reverse Firefly. Yeah, it's I do really like, underrated. It hit me. I was gonna say I do like that they gave the horse a credit. Oh, they Comet, did. Comet, Comet. Comet has his own IMDb page, apparently, people. So <laughs> go like it. And uh, yeah, a quick thing about that, too. Uh, if you want to watch this show ever, it is on IMDb TV for free. Oh, wow. So okay, if you sweet. have the IMDb TV app, uh, it is absolutely free on there. I mean, you got to watch their bullshit ads. He did a lot of TV shows. Uh, he was in Lois and Clark. I mean, yeah, he did. He did an episode of American Gothic. Homicide, Life on the Street. Yeah, everybody ends up on those shows. But he did a TV movie in '96. Yo, here we go. Tornado. Have you ever seen Tornado? I haven't seen Tornado. All right, so take Twister and just change things. 
Just a little bit. I just gonna say, I thought it was the exact same. Fucking I mean, movie, oh no, man. they changed the look. It it's, doesn't have Helen Hunt. So I know. I was like gonna it. say, you give me Twister of Al Helen Hunt and yeah. Bruce Campbell. Yeah. 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 Let's touch weird. upon that. It sounds perfect. Well, I think I think the the difference is like the differences are so small. Like I don't understand how they got didn't get sued. It was like like instead I mean, of like the the big contraption called Dorothy, they called theirs the Tin Man. And it's just little things that they change. Smart, yeah. It's a twenty percent uh, thing, probably. I saw that movie on TV. Now I had no. It was a TV clue. movie. Yeah, yeah, it was a TV. It was made for TV movie, so I had no clue. All I was like, "Holy shit!" The guy from Army of Darkness and Evil Dead's gonna be in this. Uh, totally watching this. Yeah, that's like watching the Love Bug too. Yeah, you yeah. know, you should know uh, what to expect. He did that. Her I mean, Love Bug movie. I mean, Asylum. Their whole company's built off of movies like that. You yeah. just take something that's out. Transformers came out. They're like Transmorphers, motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, that's where the money's at. But I would love to find a version of Tornado. I've never, I've never been able to find it's gotta a be good version. YouTube. That's weird. It's got to be out there somewhere. I've got Alien Apocalypse. I got a lot, I a lot of these shitty movies. But they never released. I don't think that one's on DVD. It weird. has to be on YouTube though. Yeah, probably. I said a good copy. <laughs> oh, like that matters. <laughs> Why do you need a good copy? Like, oh, it's got tracking I problems. Need a fucking 4K press of Tornado. <laughs> With fucking yes. eight hours of special features. I'll buy the fucking Twister 4K release and I'll edit in Bruce Campbell for a couple scenes for you. Sold. There yeah. You I'll give you thirty dollars for it. Um, but yeah, Tornado came out in ninety six. Before that, he did. Uh, he was in Xena, Hercules. Well, yeah, Gothic, same, same character in Xena and Hercules. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that you know, it seems like in the mid nineties he did a lot of stuff like xena like you said xena hercules and then he had a lot a few bit parts here and there uh as well it was the weird the weird science tv shows and an episode of that yeah. um but you know then he had some bit parts escape from la he was the surgeon general yeah, yeah, yeah. he's unrecognizable the surgeon general of, 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 of la yeah that they did some crazy makeup on him for that it's really weird to hire bruce campbell and then make it look nothing like bruce campbell but yeah that's, that's what they did i came out in 96 it's a man it's you know what going back and watching that film now I appreciate it. I'm not going to do more. it. Not, okay. Not going to say it because it's one of those things. See, it's like my evil dead thing. It's like, I can't wait. This is going to be fucking amazing. What did they do? What I, did you do? John Carpenter. I but fucking hate that movie. I went back and rewatched it and I'm like, I get it. It's fun. I get it. Is it? It's fun? over the top. The, the, the visual effects are bad. The surfing with fucking Fonda. Uh, Pam just, Greer with the, with the I big mean, voice. You know, it's, you just have to go get drunk, man. I saw it when I was a kid and I still hated it. <laughs> So there's that says no, something. There's no going back and watching it. When I, if I see it at 13 you and hate it, Snake Plissken like, uh, uh, surfing. No, it yeah, no, do it for you. It's so bad. I like cheesy movies, man, but that one was just not. That that character shouldn't be that cheesy and corny. They, he lost the grit that made Escape from New York so fucking good. They try to make it 90s. That's yeah, all they did. They took way like, too hip. They went from like the 80s gritty shit to like 90s hip hacker style filmmaking yeah. everything was colorful everything was loud and colorful and fun and goofy the most violent movies in the world everything's just fucking rainbow colored and everybody's happy <laughs> and fucking somebody gets killed and you just make a joke about it yeah let's steve, yeah, uh, put fine. steve buscemi in there and it'll be great just like man no he's a great actor but he's an ugly dude <laughs> it's all about the eyes man that steve dude Buscemi's distracts eyeballs. me when i try to watch you i'm like god your eyeballs uh, man you guys want to jump into bubba hotep or you want to well, he's still got a few more things yeah, yeah Xbox well, episode. Uh, i'll tell you what this, this is something i wrote down up there i'll and tell you what why, i'll tell you what because like the re one of the reasons he really jumped into tv and he was taking anything he could possibly get is the man only made like because nobody was hired ninety three thousand dollars on oh. army of darkness that's what he made off that film that's how, fucked. That's how, insane. How Universal that, production. How much did that movie make? Did it do well? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. That's a good question. Dave? I'll figure that Dave out. has the tablet. Uh, so, yeah, fuck after that. I, you, you quits his regular job, jump into, into actual acting, and then he gets paid that. And that's awful. 93K? I know. He makes that at like a wizard world now. Right? Sitting in a chair for fucking three days. I guarantee he makes that much. Yeah. Budget was $11 million. Uh, box office was 21.5. Right. I think he got paid enough. <laughs> You're the star of this movie, Universal. Is it going to be a wide spread, a screen, a wide release? And then, you know, eh, here's some money. Well, we got to pay advertisers and do some uh, Hollywood accounting. Yeah. 93K, bud. Weinstein gets the rest. Fuck. He oh. had nothing to do with this. This wasn't a yeah. Weinstein Yeah, I know what you're talking about, though. though. Yeah. It always goes, all goes to the producers. You know what's fun about Army of Darkness? I just noticed it on the VHS. So you have Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness comes out, and it's from the director of Dark Man. Yeah. 
So that's the focus. Yeah. Huh. Well, they had to go with what was hot. People knew Darkman. Really? Well, and it's the same company. That's how he got that yeah. universal contract is from Darkman. And then Mark, Darkman still... costs nothing compared to what they're usually doing. Yeah. They're like, fuck, let's make a an already well-known franchise. And like, well, that sounds like a great idea. Well, let's change the movie name at the very end. Yeah. I would have put the sequel to the movie Stephen King liked. <laughs> That would have been a good. That would have, I'm just going to come to you next time I have Stephen a Stephen King liked this movie. They, they <laughs> did 15 years ago. Two movies ago, Stephen King liked this franchise. <laughs> Watch this one. Before we get into Bubba Hilltop, though, there's still there was the Jack of All Trades TV show that he did. That was a well. great show. What the yes. fuck is that? Holy shit! Why would I know that? I don't know if you, you fucking know what Tell Hercules it, and give Zena us a synopsis is. there, Davy. Because Hercules and Xena are timeless. <laughs> I can't Lucy Lawless. And <laughs> Derek is on a, on a bubble. I love this. Lucy Lawless and Kevin Sorbo. I don't know what fucking jack of all trades. You it's don't like, even know what it's about. You're Googling it. I'm pulling up the cast, asshole. <laughs> what, what, that doesn't tell me what it's about. That's the, the question is, what's it about? It's it's like a spy show almost, but it's like it's. Don't whisper it, on the show. Uh, God damn it. He's getting angry because he doesn't know what this movie's about. I'm trying to figure out the timeline for it. That was the Did important. it actually last one season or is it is this another one season Bruce Campbell thing? Mm, Twenty two episodes. So Shit, probably yeah, one season. Probably was no, it says it was two seasons. Yeah. Two eleven episode seasons. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's a spy. He's an American spy. Stationed in the South Pacific Island in the early nineteenth century. There it is, nineteenth century. Just watch it. Just, just watch. I it. thought you guys knew more about it because you looked at me like I was an asshole for never seeing it. Oh. I figured you would have seen it, Derek. That's Why would I have seen it? Because you like awful things, and it's right up your alley. I was probably watching Step by Step back then. Oh, good point. If it's not on TJIF, it can get the fuck out of here. And something else, something else he did in the two thousand early two thousands that was important. He started doing more voice acting, so he did the Evil Dead Hail to the King video game. Oh yeah, and all the video games. <sighs> oh my god, you yeah. don't like that game either. That game's a piece of shit. It is bad. It was fun. No, this no. Hell to the King was not the fun. the camera angle sucked. The controls and the camera. Yeah, angles, every time you went to do something, the camera angle. It's fun, it, I remember that. If fun is like smashing your PlayStation or Dreamcast, if you got the fucking HD remaster, no, fuck that. The one on the PS2 though, uh, Fistful of Boomstick, and then the other one, those are Regeneration. Yeah, those Fistful, are fun games. Fistful was a lot better. It's the one with like the little guy. He the little throw. guy. Yeah, you can throw. Yeah, <laughs> you used better words than I was going to use for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're welcome yeah and then he he did a few things here and there like other bit parts the majestic uh he was in spider-man which sets sort of sets the precedent it's a sam raimi film bruce campbell's gonna be he's there somewhere all three spider-man movies he is. and in the first one he's the ring announcer which this made like my boner explode because it was he's the ring announcer for spider-man versus fucking macho man randy savage Bone 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 Bone. Bone. <laughs> And he, yeah, named, he, named, he he makes it very clear that he's the one that named Spider Man. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. If you ever want to see a scene that like puts all the things I love in one thing, so you got, you got comics, pro wrestling, and Bruce Campbell all in one fucking scene. That that's my brain in a ring. Yeah, sounds about right. That's so, good. And then he, of course he does the sequels because he's in uh what's he like the bellhop and then the next one like in a hotel. And then he works in like the restaurant in the third one. Yeah, you know, it's the opera house where we're like the opera house. Yeah, that's her play. Yeah, yeah. and he's, he's like, like oh, fix, fix your tie. Yeah, yeah. Now you can't come in. No, you're you're totally <laughs> fucking late. The doors are closed. Yeah, so he's an asshole. The Spider Man in each one. Hell yeah. But then we get to Bubble Hotel. Do we? Yes, Let's we get do to get to Bubble Hotel. Oh, no, we did this last week. You weren't here. Did we? <laughs> well, we don't have to talk <laughs> we, about it more. No, I don't know. Hit it. No, yeah, I want to hear your take on Bubble Hotel. Bubble Hotel was great. Don Coscarelli, uh, the made phantasm you know beastmaster Beastmaster. gets basically the 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 short synopsis of the film so you've got bruce campbell plays a character named sebastian half sebastian half is elvis he thinks he's elvis or is he elvis either way you never you never really know yeah and he elvis traded away his life of fame and fortune because he wanted to go back to being you know just a normal guy and then the jackass that he traded his life to od'd so nobody believes him that he's Elvis <laughs> and he's poor and he lives in a trailer park. Well, he ends up in a old folks home and that's where the movie starts. And I'm not even going to tell you about what's going on. You're just going to have to watch it. What? And it's they battle the best. Well, no, 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 I'm saying <laughs> the opening scene where yeah. he's, 
basically getting getting his getting that weird thing on his pecker lubricator. Oh, his, his growth on yeah, his pecker. His growth. Yeah, uh, so God. it's him and Ozzy Davis. So uh, Ozzy Davis. Ozzy Davis, great. amazing actor. Ozzy Davis, who thinks me this color? Who thinks he is JFK? Um, and uh, a mummy comes into the old folks home and just starts fucking killing everybody. I just love it because it's like so wacky. It's, it's so random and it's such a cool idea yeah. that you have Elvis and JFK fighting a mummy, and that's probably <laughs> how they pitched it. <laughs> yeah. And that's a great pitch. I would I would watch that movie ten out of ten times. Yeah, uh, written by Jar Lansdale, who is a fantastic fucking grindhouse, uh, uh, like grindhouse movies in books. He he's great. He's gonna do the, the Bubba Nosferatu after that, but I guess it never happened. There, have, see, I've I've heard several things. I heard that Bubba Nosferatu didn't happen because uh, there was a script and Bruce didn't like it. Uh, you know, I've heard, I've heard <laughs> that's a weird one. Yeah, that sound right. I've, I've, like, look on Derek's face. I know. I know. Really? I've heard they had like the funding issues, which is also doesn't sound like it could be because it seemed like. Bubba well, that, Hotep. That's possible though. Well, yeah, but it seemed like Bubba Hotep was a was. I know, but Don's whole career is movie. like that though. Like Don Casarelli, or whatever they say his last name. But like every other movie that dude makes is funding issues. Oh so. god, yeah, it's the epitome of independent filmmaking. So I guess uh, I mean that makes more sense to me than Bruce Campbell reading anything. And being like, <laughs> nope, not gonna do this. Not gonna do it. Yeah, I'll do either, fucking two seasons of Jack of All Trades. Yeah. <laughs> either way, it didn't happen, and it's yeah. very sad because. Even at the end of the movie, you know, there's a teaser for Bubba Nosferatu attacking the she vampires. Yeah. And when you see something like that, you get really excited. And then it just didn't happen. Yeah, I forgot yeah. to mention that last week. See, that's what Dave's here for now. <laughs> I remember some things, guys. I know. It's funny, though, because we're going to have two weeks in a row of back to back breakdowns of Bubba Hotep. And I kind of love that. That's yeah. funny. I have all hey, the man, movies for great. that to happen to, hey. though. It's a great Bubba movie. And if somebody you. hasn't seen if you haven't seen it, if you're a fan of Bruce Campbell, you should definitely see it. Is it streaming? It, I don't know. I don't know if it's streaming anywhere, but I'm sure you can buy it for like five bucks. Somewhere. That's what I've learned doing this podcast. Not to get too far off track, but like fucking keep physical media alive because so much shit is nowhere to be found on streaming sites. Like when we did trimmers, I couldn't find any trimmers besides the series on YouTube. Uh, doing this Bruce Campbell stuff, which I own most of these movies, but I'm fucking lazy. And sometimes I'm just <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to put this I mean, yeah. in and I'll stream it. But I couldn't find, like, I found the first Evil Dead in the reboot on Netflix. But Evil Dead 2, you got to pay for anywhere. I couldn't find Army of Darkness. Uh, I couldn't find Bubba Hotep, unless it's on something I don't fucking have. That's a great argument for that. So it's just like, man, like, guys, this shit pops up for, like, two months, and then it's gone if you keep, you know, if you give these streaming services all the power. Everyone, physical media alive, man. I talked to so many people who are, obviously, everybody's younger than me, I guess. But, like, they're always, eh, I don't, I don't really buy yeah. stuff. I'm like, okay. It's a, it's a great fucking point. It sucks, dude. It was incredibly like, it, I thought it was gonna be convenient. I was like, there's no way all the Tremors movies aren't streaming. Cause I got like seven different services. Right. And none of them. And you're getting ready to release another part one. six or whatever. Right. None of them were streaming. And it's just like, fuck that man. And it's, it's even of all these like evil dead, like one of the biggest horror franchises ever. I can find the reboot, but I couldn't find the other ones besides part one on Netflix, but wow. the other two. Nope. So I had to fucking get up and put a DVD in a DVD player. I'm fucking tired now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I <laughs> take it for granted. I'm like, I'm I don't own it, but I, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like getting up. It'll be on YouTube. Yeah. Maybe. It did really make me, because I was getting close to going like, hey, I'll just go digital with everything. I was pretty fucking close before doing this podcast of starting to get rid of like a lot of my physical media. But now I'm like, well, fuck, man. Like, they're screwing me. Even with like video games. I was like, I don't got about video games that much anymore. I got Game Pass. And then me and my son been playing the fuck out of NBA 2K. We went in to play it today, and they're like, nope, we've removed it from Game Pass. Holy shit. During the NBA playoffs. Because they do it to fuck you. These these streaming sites are doing it to like get more money out of you. Because they know if they can give you like a taste. Oh, yeah, remove that game during the playoffs. Because now I'm going to like want it. Now I'm going to give you money for a game I just paid played for three months. Right. He may be the youngest of all of us, but he sounds like my fucking grandfather. Yeah. It's true, though. Yeah. And then it's it, like it's yeah. devastating because people are always thinking that way. It's yeah. like we're talking about torrents and people downloading things. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Look how Amazon works. They'll give you know you can watch a movie and if you go back, say a friend comes over and you're like, hey, check this out. Suddenly it's gone, but it has that thing. You could buy it for or rent it for nine ninety nine. Not a big deal, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the director of this movie will get a penny. Awesome. It's evil. Yeah. Okay, anyway, back to Bruce Campbell. Anyway, Sorry for that fucking side. No, it's, that, but it's it, fucking very it's, it, it's very valid. I mean, I watched Bill and Ted, uh, the new Bill and Ted movie yeah. this week, this weekend, and I just went ahead and bought it yeah. on Amazon. 
because it's five dollars more to just own it just so own I can it, watch yeah. it again. But when it comes out, I'll probably buy a physical copy of it because yeah. digital is not the way to go. Yeah, not for me because I can just remove it at any time. Even when you buy like the digital copy, they can remove that shit. So. Oh shit! Well, I have all these Mountain the VHS and Blu-rays and DVDs and silly Steve edition and crap. So fuck it. yeah, I and know. I have, a, I have a stack of VHS. I mean VCRs. So if something go one goes down, I got another. <laughs> I'm st- I'm still torn on it, but yeah, I mean, just, I'll go back to Bruce Campbell. But even yes. we had Ryan Riker last week doing the comedy thing, and I gave him a stack of about thirty DVDs to watch before the show because I couldn't find any of them streaming. Wow. And that's 30 fairly like popular fucking movies. I guess popular in my world <laughs> movies. Yeah, that are cult classics, yeah. but yeah, to us, they're yeah. fucking everything. So after Bubba Hotep, where do we go with Bruce Campbell? A lot of bit parts. He did. Yeah, and I wrote that down. Bit parts again. It's like, you know, he, I guess his biggest role at the point was... Uh, uh, serving Sarah. Yeah, Serving yeah. Sarah. That's not a horror film. Know, it's it fun is. to watch him do a comedy film. It's, it's, it's what he's kind of built for, but... I, no offense, I just didn't care. It was like one of those guys yeah. from Friends was in it. I can't remember. <laughs> one of the guys, you guys are depressing because yeah, it's fucking this movie just didn't do much for me. But he did a whole lot of bitch parts. Bitch parts. He did bits fucking parts. He did Duck Dodgers. He was Pork Pigler. <laughs> okay, he was Canine pork. Caddy. I don't know. It's Duck Dodgers. He's the cartoon. literally rambling off. Yeah, parts. but just he was in a lot of a lot of random movies or a lot of random bit see, parts, TV series, shorts. You know, for me, I probably. Most of the shit on the board I didn't see until you know Burn Notice, which is funny that I watched so much Burn Notice because I watched a lot of that because that's like a you know USA TV shows are like the grandpa type shit or like young kids like I watch I remember watching like Pacific Blue when I was a kid mm. and then like La Femme Nikita and Silk Stockings all that shit would come on you know but I didn't really give a fuck about it and it, it usually it was like on after Monday Night Raw so I'd watch it I watch Cops on Bikes because you're on after fucking Monday Night Raw. <laughs> But Burn Notice, I was like, oh, fuck, there's Bruce Campbell as the sidekick. I got to watch this. And I watch, and, and the dude from uh, Blair Witch 2, whatever his name is. I don't know if anybody else calls him the dude from Blair Witch 2, but that's no, what I know. Call, I got to hope so. What the fuck's his name? Oh, uh, God, I don't get it. Hold on. Fucking Carl. Carl. <laughs> it's Carl. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> really? I don't know. I got to hope it is. I don't know. No, nah, he's done all kinds of shit, man. But he's a great character is on it, Burn Notice. Is Jeffrey Donovan, was that the? Maybe. But hey, did you ever watch Burn Notice, Steve? No, it's just I like never a, got into it. It's just a spy movie, essentially. With one Another spy like, show, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I stopped show? watching television, literally cable yeah. television, until like 2001. His character never was, gotten it back. Yeah, his character was Sam Axe, which he was a retired spy. Yeah. He was just like the, he, he liked uh, he liked uh, Hawaiian shirts and mojitos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like he was the comedic like act on there. You know, that's what he was there for. So it was it was kind of a fairly serious like spy show, which you that's what you get on USA because they just show like CSI and shit like that all day. But then you had like Bruce Campbell, who was just nothing but one liners, kind of this like oh, goofy retired spy that's kind of shady sometimes. I guess like he's like the Richie to this other guy's Duncan McCloud essentially. But oh he's, shit! Like, okay, he's, but yeah. he's like a very old old version of Richie. Uh, that show went on for like it's probably the most successful show to be honest with you i think it went for like four or five seasons yeah it went it went uh 2006 to 2009 they even had a spin-off, a spin-off movie yeah the spin-off movie well bruce campbell got his own spin-off movie fall of oh, sam wow. x yeah 2011 yeah so they like yeah so it went to 2009 and then they had they had one spin-off that wasn't bruce campbell's and they had bruce campbell's own spin-off movie yeah so there you go. Fucking burn nose. If you can find that, uh, watch 2000, it. 2007, 2000, 2013. I was looking at the wrong thing. Holy yeah. shit. So it went six years. Yeah. Compared to one season of uh, the one Briscoe we, County. Yeah, the one that we all, all liked. Yeah. Yeah, there there were some movies be- that he episodes. did before Jekyll, that he did before that. Um, Alien Apocalypse, which is another TV yeah. movie. That movie is so bad, but it's so fun. I love it. I it's love that so piece of fun. shit. I never saw oh, that. He spoofs it in uh, they, they Call Me Bruce. My name is Bruce. Yeah, it's just uh, really bad uh, CG praying mantis looking aliens that eat people's heads. And uh, yeah, that's all you did. Bruce Campbell. That's was it on did. sci-fi? Yes. Yeah. It was definitely. Perfect. It was a sci-fi it's, it's production, definitely a, a sci-fi movie. And then that he checks made out. The Man with the Screaming Brain, which I believe was his directorial debut. Yeah, I know you're a big fan of that. So if you want to expound on that. Well, anyway, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan of I'm it. not a fan of that film at all, actually. It's a, I was happy that he got to make it. He wrote it in 1983. Yes, um, it's very much like uh, like an old sci-fi film, like an old like if it has like a '60s sci-fi film almost feel to it. Um, it's been years since I've seen it, you know. That 
I couldn't tell you a whole lot about it anymore. <laughs> so I, <laughs> Great I, movie. It, 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 it wasn't one of I'm my sure favorites. Of his. Fans. So yeah. how does he end up with a screaming brain? He gets into an accident. And Don't look gets, at me, man. He gets into an accident, and then he gets somebody else's brain put into his skull. Oh, and then the brain screams? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I have the comic book somewhere, too. Yeah, that I was really excited for it, too. I have the DVD. I just I watched it probably one time See, that's just, 15 yeah. years ago. I got I it because when I was working at the video store. Uh, that's where I got mine from. We got, well, I got a screener copy. Oh, I didn't get that. I um, just took one. It was a promotional copy, so uh, I got I got. Oh, that. you were really excited. Oh, I was super excited. I was like, I want to see this Bruce Campbell movie before it's released to the general public. Like, I had it months before it came out. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, mm. uh, th- and that's that. I mean, if you're gonna yeah beat us up on YouTube, that's great. Please do. But uh, this is the movie of his that I was really excited for. He was gonna direct it. Like I said, he wrote it in 1983, and uh, I remember reading about it. I got the comic book. I bought the movie, and I was like, "Fuck, it's not a horror film. Yeah. It's not a really good comedy. The effects are really bad." Like I said it, it. It feels like a, like a like sort of a campy like 60s sci-fi film. Yeah. He, yeah. he made it on the cheap in Bulgaria. Uh, I remember all these little things, but you know what's funny? I don't remember the movie. <laughs> yeah, either do I. I, get, I remember the trailer for the movie because it's on a lot of shit that I have. Yeah. But yeah, I watched it the one time and I didn't hate it. It's just Bruce Campbell has a lot of shit and it's not going to be the one I go back to. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, and he did a lot of bit parts after that too. He did some of the Disney movies. I mean, Sky High was Sky a Disney High, movie. The Ant Bully. The Ant Bully. Aqua Teen movie, you got that up. There. I had to. Yeah, yeah. He, he, did, he, he did a lot of voice uh, voice, voice work. Stuff. Yeah, Spider Man Three was around that time too, wasn't it? Yeah, this is around the time I check out because I I can tell you I probably haven't seen any of these. Uh, this would be all you guys here. Well, Fucking. I mean, my name is Bruce. You've seen that. Yeah, that was like 2004, though, right? No, 2007. 2007. And, uh, that was the one. That was the film I thought that the man with the screaming brain was going to be like. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I was really excited for this film, and to me, it paid off. He actually made this film on his farm. That's how he cut budget. Yeah. My name is Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. All the sets are still there, apparently. That's fun. Yeah. Like, it's essentially like a, a talent takes the actor, Bruce Campbell, thinking that he can actually kill zombies and things like that. Yeah. And he's. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a thing that's been done before. It's, Which is the yeah, the, the, <laughs> but it's the 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 ghost of Bean Curd or something like that. I can't. Remember. Oh my god, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, exactly. They got there's another film. They oh, I feel like they, they ripped this off of because like he's supposed to be the hero and they get him. It's like like Galaxy Quest. Yeah, no, it's been done before. This concept's yeah. been done before. Going like, hey, this guy's a movie star. Let's use him. Uh, then after that, JCVD, like, like Van, Three Amigos, <laughs> Van Damme did it with JCVD. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There's a bank robbery happening, and they're like, "Oh, John Club Van Damme will save us." And he's like, "No, no. I can't. that movie was a little bit more serious than oh, Amy's way Bruce. serious. Well, because that was based off his actual life uh, to a point, which made it really weird and awkward. But that's a great movie. Well, my name is Bruce. Had a lot of uh, you know, like Danny Hicks was in it. Like yeah. a lot of the people that you saw yeah. in the Evil Dead series, Army of Darkness. Yeah, um, you call your friends in. Man. Yeah, they were they were they were all there. It was a funny movie. Um, and it was just it was just well made it was it was like you said everything that i hoped man of screaming no, man was, screaming brain would have been yeah but yeah, it was fun it was supposed to get a sequel too that was supposed to get like a one right like bruce versus frankenstein or yeah, something i can't shit. believe that nothing has been done with that they did like a really bad comic which i feel like every horror movie now gets a comic but yeah that's what it's true sometimes everything. it's a good thing though so you don't get a really bad movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all the big trouble little china comic books that came out well, some of those, all the evil dead yeah. comic books that came out some of those are okay well the evil dead they got too far into like a bruce versus everything dark man versus, I mean, yeah, dark man versus reanimator i've got a lot of those i had to stop there was yeah, even a, did like yeah. marvel zombies yeah yeah there was there was an army of darkness series that was uh a uh, comic that was that was that was going pretty strong, and it was it was great. The very well, first one, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But then it just abruptly sort of ended. Well, it's been relaunched. Yeah, and- the art started going downhill. Yeah. I remember that, and the stories was next, and it's just like bummer. <laughs> they did Ash versus Freddy versus Jason because they knew fans wanted the movie, so they're like, oh uh, fuck it, we can do the comics. Oh, I bought them, right? It's fine. I mean, I bought them. I read them. It's just because- yeah, and, you know, I bought into a lot of that shit because I'm a mark uh, when it comes to buying Bruce Campbell stuff. I'm kind of fucking- <laughs> yeah. Got a whole basement decorated in Bruce Campbell. If he came to my house, he'd probably call the police. 
<laughs> I like you. Act like he'd come to your house and be like, uh, "Did I get drugged to be here? How He's did like, I get you're here?" You're gonna make me into a lamp. <laughs> yeah, he is. I'll put you, you in the corner with the rest of my Bruce Campbell stuff. Um, uh, I mean, my name is Bruce. Is like the last. Big thing he's done, right? Well, you've got oh, Ash versus no. Evil Dead. Well, but, yeah, but the TV series, yeah, yeah, but yeah, he really didn't do a whole lot after that. Like film been, wise, yeah, yeah. We can jump into Ash versus Evil Dead, or we can talk about some of the things he's been doing since. <laughs> well, what's he been doing? Well, he's Tell been me. he's re, more so recently. Uh, they've been doing a drive-in tour where they're showing Army of Darkness, Evil Dead. Uh, some nights they'll show Evil Dead Two. Um, and he'll do a Q and a with that. So it's like a social distancing thing where you can go and see Bruce Campbell in your car. Oh, I don't watch do that. somebody's probably jerking off in one of those cars. Oh watching yeah. Bruce Campbell. No, and it's probably death. Like, I've seen death metal Dave. You know, I've actually seen me. some pictures from it. They look pretty cool. Cause they do build like the cabin cause they do a social distancing photo op. Oh, that's so, awesome. Like, so like you stand on one side of the cabin, he stands on the other. It's just a picture <laughs> of everybody in front of it. So that's something. I mean, I know yeah. it's not the best way to meet Bruce. You know, I feel I feel like we should have mentioned it too. Bruce has written like four or five books too. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. read. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, uh, they're fucking great. If Chins could kill, uh, make love the Bruce Campbell way. That's right. I, I met him on his uh, on his last book tour. Uh, he did the last fan standing. Oh, Dave has a story. I forgot yeah. about this. So when they when he was on this book tour, um, they basically they gave everybody these little remotes and they were going to have a game show. And I didn't want to be on a game show. I, I just didn't care to do it. And so they gave everybody these remotes and they'd flash questions up and there were multiple choice questions. Well, I got the highest score. <laughs> So they're like, you get to be on the game show. So now I'm forced to be on it. And you get up there. There was four of us total. And it was a little, it made me a little nervous. Like, I really wish there was footage of it because I got, he asked a couple questions and I, I answered way too fast and got it wrong. Um, but, uh, yeah, but like off by like one word, like the word should have oh, been swapped or something. Right. I remember. Right. Well, well, that's, I, I didn't, I didn't win. I wasn't the last fan standing. God, you suck. I, I came in, I came in second, but Bruce Gamble gave me 20 bucks. Um, so you that was that, that 20 bucks, don't you? <laughs> that was no, I spent that. Fuck. Times are tough, Steve. <laughs> it's true. Um, so, you know, the, the final round was, was, was you, you pick a category and the person that was in the lead, which was the other guy, he got to pick the category first, which was vampires. And I was like, shit, I would have taken that one. Cause the other one was X-Men movies. And I know some about them, but I don't know all of them. Right. And I missed a question. He answered the question. So he got a point. Well, when it was his turn. They asked, you know, several questions, and one of them was about the movie Fright Night, and he said Night Fright as the answer. Right. And I was like, oh, that's wrong, but they gave him to him anyways. What? I think Bruce was tired of us. He just didn't want to be on stage anymore. He's like, I just give it to him anyway. Oh, my God. Close enough. So it was was close. It was close enough, and it was fun. So it was a fun experience, and uh, yeah, that that that's my that's my. It's your Bruce, Bruce Campbell story. That's, that's one of my many Bruce Campbell stories. Eric, do you have a Bruce Campbell story? I don't know. Oh, well, no. I mean, with Bruce, like, I think the most interesting thing about Bruce Campbell, at least to me, is that so many fans will be like, "That guy's a dick. That guy's an asshole." Yeah. Because he acts just like Bruce Campbell, so he's like the guy that you love, but then when he talks to you the way that you would expect. Everyone, no, he's a dick. All he does is joke. He just jokes oh, around with people yeah. all the time. Well, yeah. When, when, I, when, when, when I was on the game show, he asked me what I did for a living. I said, you know, I, I work with cars and, you know, I work as a service writer and whatnot. And he's like, he's like, so uh, grandma comes in and, you know, you're going to loosen some bolts. So she needs to make so she needs to pay you some more more money. And I was like, no, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. And he's like, OK, criminal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was it was funny. But you know, I I don't want to I don't take all 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 the time. But the first the first time I actually met him was the the first his first book tour that Chins could kill. Yeah, I was and on that tour. It was on Halloween night. It was at uh, the Holly Cook Bookstore in town, and I was at work and I couldn't get off to go to go meet Bruce Campbell, and I was really bummed out about it. So what I did is I just took a lunch break and I went. I love this story. And it was <laughs> it was it was several hours of waiting to meet Bruce Campbell so I can get him to sign this book. How long is your lunches? It wasn't it that wasn't day it was like 3 hours. It wasn't 3 hours, I'll tell you that. So, I get all the way up there and I finally meet him. And he's like he's like he's like, "Well, what do you do?" I said, "Oh, well, actually I work at this video store down the street or I might not now because 
I've been here for several hours. And he's like, he's like, you want me to call your boss? I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got a phone and he called my boss. He said, hey, this is Bruce Campbell. You sell my movies. Dave has been here doing some research. So cut him, cut him some slack. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so for everybody that says Bruce Campbell's a dick. No, he's an awesome person. He's an awesome human yeah. being. My Bruce Campbell tells you he's not a dick either. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's every everybody that's met him when they explain to me what he did. I'm like, he doesn't sound like a dick. He's he not just, Linda Blair. He sounds like Bruce Campbell. Right. Like the my one of my first interactions with him was, you know, I always used to have tables with, you know, Western Evil and the t-shirt company and shit with Neil. So we would always do Wizard World, which he was like he was at every fucking wizard for like eight years straight, especially Chicago. He walked by us one time, stops and goes. That shirt's disgusting. And this is Buddy Holly's corpse. Says that'll be the day. And it's the plane crash and shit. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, you guys selling that shirt? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you're disgusting and you're disgusting. Disgusting. Points at both of us and walks away. And me and him were like giggling like schoolgirls. We're like, oh, this girl's <laughs> disgusting. Next day, y'all got that in a large. <laughs> 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 yeah. And it, it was also because I was like, what the fuck? What? It, it's so oh, funny yeah. that he's, he does shit like that. He likes to poke at people and have fun. But that's what you should do because at these conventions, people don't understand that most of these people hear the same fucking thing all day. If you don't figure out a way to have fun, you're going to be miserable. Oh, absolutely. And he, he just gives them Bruce and people get mad about that sometimes. So, what can you fucking do? You that's can't perfect. win. That's a great fucking, uh, that's a fucking amazing story, actually. Uh, I think I've told mine before. I met him in 91 at a mall tour he was doing dressed as Bresco, Briscoe County Jr., I think it was 91. Bresco. 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 Yeah, I always think about boobs. Sorry. About Derek's Scram mom again. Scramble boobies. Oh, <laughs> God. Mother. God damn it. Fuckers. And uh, I get up there, and it's a free fucking signing. So he's at the oh, mall. Those days. Yeah, and he comes down the escalator like, oh, Bruce fucking Campbell. No, There's people behind me like, I don't know who that is. I'm like, why are you in this line? Yeah. What the fuck? And um, I get up there, and he's really fucking sweet. He's all dressed in that awful cowboy outfit. It's hilarious. <laughs> And uh, I don't think the show had even come out yet. It was all about Evil Dead 3 at the time. Army of Darkness. And uh, I got him to sign my magazine. He was really nice. And then he picks up my daughter, who is an infant. And he shakes her, and she throws up on his costume. And he takes it like fucking like a champ. He just goes, well, that's fun. Here you go. <laughs> he signs my shit. We walk off. That's my Bruce Campbell story. And he didn't. He wasn't a dick. I have met. We've all met. People at this table, we've all Some met fucking guests. Genuine, shitty people. Oh sometimes. my yeah. God. And we're yeah. actually thinking about having a, uh, an episode yeah. about uh, convention nightmares. We may not meet, name names on that one, but I'll tell you right now, Bruce Campbell treated me like a fucking uh, like an Steve ice cream sandwich. Might dude. not name names. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, if I, somebody can throw up on you and you're cool with it, I'm, I, that's my kind of guy. He's been cool every time I've met him. And I've, like, I've met him in passing, I've met him being at the same fucking restaurant during the show. And I met him for photo ops and paying for fucking autographs. Every single time he's been cool. He's just been a funny smart ass. Yeah. You know, just like if you bring him your Army of Darkness poster. Every time, because I've done, I've done this twice now, because I've had two posters <laughs> signed because I'm a fucking loser. I mean, like, he goes, Where do you want me to sign it? If you don't point at the fucking tire, he's going to go, No, you're wrong. That doesn't even make sense to sign it there. I'm signing the tire. <laughs> and he does it every time. But it's just insane, man. But people get mad about it because they think he's like legitimately being a dick. And I was like, no, man, he's just fucking having fun with you. you gotta and pass there's the probably tire. somebody listening to this right now that's like, no, that motherfucker didn't hug me during the fucking pandemic at the six foot apart photo op or whatever. You know, it's, that's what people get mad about. Yeah. Anything I've ever heard, it's like, oh, he didn't do this or he didn't do that. I'm like, he doesn't have to do anything. You, yeah. There, there is genuine what, fucking pricks out there. Yeah. Was he a prick or did he, did he not just do exactly what you wanted him to do? And that's the real. Yeah. He is the character. And he's like a convention icon now. Of anybody, I think he's like the staple of conventions, really. Because he did wiz all those Wizard Worlds, all those horror conventions beforehand. He was doing them back when they were still free. You know, free yeah. autographs and shit like well, that's that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I met him for free. He headlines everywhere he's at, no matter how many other guests are there. It's still going to be a crazy line for fucking Bruce Campbell, which always blew my mind at Wizard World because they got like Spike and Christopher Lloyd and all these fucking like what I would think were bigger names. Yeah. And then you look at Bruce Campbell's line and it's wrapped around the whole place still. And he's on his 400th convention in two years. Yeah, I think he's going <laughs> to you know, me all warm and feeling inside. You no, know, it, it's cool. I mean, he's got a pretty crazy fan base. And it's, you know, when you go over all these movies, you see like, 
how out there it all is. How it goes from like, you know, those t- the TV moms and shit probably have seen Xena and Hercules and fucking Briscoe County Jr. And then you got us dorks that are like, oh, Evil Dead. Maniac Cop 2. So you get a, like, a <laughs> group of people that are, you know, in line to just meet Bruce Campbell. Yeah, and I think I think I and think, burn notice moms for and sure. burn notice definitely burn notice moms. But uh, I think I think you know Ash versus Evil Dead. That's that's huge to the fact that people still see him because that was what we were all waiting for for oh, the longest. What time. What a perfect ending for uh, that! I didn't finish it. I haven't watched season three yet. Oh my! You know what? what you, let's let's talk about it because this is the, this is the end of the podcast, anyways. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk oh. about uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. It came out in 2015. Uh, I remember the premiere because at Gore Club we show all kinds of things, and I had people trying to serve me papers, trying to say that I couldn't show it, and I'm like, I do it legally, baby. Yeah. Anyways, that that was one of those things I remember. So when we premiered the show on the night that it premiered, it was a big deal to me, and it couldn't have been more perfect. I thought it was a perfect. It was exactly what I wanted yeah. Army of Darkness to be. I wasn't there for it because I was just like, I can't watch this around people. Yeah, well, it was, just, it was like a massive party. And if you don't know about the World Club, it's pretty much like uh, a, a huge nerd gathering of people at a bar. That's yeah. all it is. And we watch movies and shows. But that's not the point. The point is, is that Ash vs. Evil Dead was exactly why I'd hoped Army of Darkness would have been. And one of the main reasons is because they actually couldn't, they were in court trying to fight over that. They couldn't even mention Army of Darkness at the show until like season two. They couldn't talk so about it. it Who are they fighting with? MGM? M- uh, Universal. Universal. Yeah. And I just thought it was perfect. So, No, I loved it. Like the first two seasons I thought were great. And they brought in Lucy Lawless, Xena motherfucker. Mm. That's right. A little Xena called back. back. Who was married Lucy to Rob Tappert uh, since, I guess, goddamn Hercules days. Oh, really? Rob Tappert has sure. been one of their main producers through all the Evil Dead things. And is he a dentist? Films. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. He's been married to Lucy Lawless. That's why... Uh, a lot of those productions are in Australia. I know it's New Zealand. It's, uh, it's New Auckland, Zealand. yeah. And, uh, you know, that's where she's from. So it's all like a big family to them. Yeah, see, I never, I canceled Stars right after season two. Didn't renew after that because I was on the, my American Gods kick too. Yeah. So I still got to finish American Gods and now Ash versus Evil Dead. But I was like, when they announced it was canceled, I really wasn't mad about it. That's, I saw like an uproar from the horror community just kind of like, fuck this, it's fucking bullshit, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we got three seasons of something we never thought we were going to get one season of. And the fact is, like, if it went on too long, it would really start to suck. Oh, it would be. Yeah. You know and I mean? if it was a movie, it would have been, it, there would have been too much to cram in to, cram to in. one movie. Yeah. So we should be thankful that we got this show. Yeah, we got the reboot of Evil Dead, which I thought was fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite remakes ever. And then we got this, like, other universe where Bruce still exists, which is cool. And that's kind of what they're doing with Chucky right now, too, because Child's Play is getting that series with the originals. Yeah. And then you still got the movie universe. I like the idea of that because that's comics have been doing this shit forever. Horror fans get really uptight and mad about it. But dude, I can go to a comic book store and buy eight different versions of X-Men all on the shelf at the same time that exist in different time frames, separate universes, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of shit. You can go see three different versions of Wolverine on the shelf at any point. Horror should be the same way. And that's a good point. I'm into the fact that we got the Ash versus Evil Dead series. And it was, I'm surprised you like it as much as you do because it's really wacky and funny. Well, sir, the thing about that is it's wacky and funny, but it came around to it. (laughs) It really melds well from Evil Dead 2. And then by the time, and then by the time it's great that you go back to the cabin, they bring back the the dagger, everything that they even pretty much refilm some of the scenes than other films, just with other characters, not just necessarily Bruce Campbell. And then by the time you get to season three, I think it's my favorite season and it didn't used to be. Um, I, I kind of see why fan kind of fell off because it got serious. You got yeah. way more serious. There's actually parts in the season three um, episodes where it's, you know, he, it's him and his daughter and his daughter just pop, pops up and he's like these, these emotional yeah. uh, uh, scenes. And it's like, well, I can see why you go from the wackiness of the first two seasons. And this is, has a lot more heart mm-hmm. and I would have liked to have seen another season, but I thought it ended perfectly. It was, I'm not even going to ruin it for anybody, but I'm just telling you like that, that when they reproduce the, sh- the Shaq scenes with his daughter, it's just like, holy fuck, this is great. The only thing that could ruin that for me is if Jamie Kennedy showed up and looked at him and said, hey, remember that time you fucked my mom in Florida? <laughs> I almost spit my drink. <laughs> I'm, your, I'm your son. And uh, the, then I would never watch it again. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. The visual effects are awesome. Uh, besides Jamie Kennedy, you... <laughs> Now I want to get a fucking Photoshop, put all that together. Oh my oh, God, the worst. God, don't. Oh, <laughs> don't <yeah. do> it. <laughs> Dave, do you have anything to say you want to say about Evil Dead? 
uh, Bruce Campbell. No, I mean, the Darden show was, was great. I mean, uh, the, overall, Bruce Campbell is one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Um, you know, he's just he's campy. You know, maybe he's not the best actor sometimes, but I can watch anything that he's in because I know what I'm getting. Like, you know, he he has he has some range, but he doesn't he doesn't stray too far out of it. And I, I sort of I sort of dig that. Um, yeah, just I, I, I love his movies. I like his wit. Like I said, I, I watched all the seasons of fucking Burn Notice just because he was in it. That's where I stand on that. I watched all of Burn Notice because of Bruce <laughs> yeah. fucking Campbell. Because of Bruce Campbell. That's it. That's it. No, he he really is like the first, I guess, like horror icon I was ever into. He was the first like face from horror that I recognized. He's one of the few like that are in a franchise. Like the hero of the franchise keeps coming back because most of the time they fucking die. Or they get, they, they yeah, make recast. it. They last like two episodes, you know, two movies, and they get recast. But most of them get Langen Camp to get killed by like part three. So it's kind of cool to have like this horror icon that's actually part of this franchise from like the start to the finish. If it's a, if it's truly over, who the fuck knows? I don't know. Yeah, I know they are making another Evil Dead film. They keep talking about it. I know it's not going to have Mia in it this one, and yeah, I don't think he's even going to be in it. I don't uh, know where it's going. Me. Yeah. Right, because I thought Mia was she was fucking amazing. she was great in that movie. She yeah. was great. Freddie Alvarez directed that, and holy shit, what a great! We'll reboot. probably get a uh, we'll probably get Bruce Campbell at the end saying groovy again. Yeah, you got to. Well, yeah. I mean that that scene was supposed to be it was supposed to be him like pulling picking up her in the up car, in the truck, picking yeah. her up. Yeah, I mean we really, we really didn't touch about that film because like we talked about, it. he's just a producer and he appears at the very end. And if you keep watching, and honestly, eventually we'll probably have to do like a full rundown of all the Evil Dead movies. Yeah, exactly. So that's why we really didn't go into all those. We may not have talked about every fucking Bruce Campbell thing ever. Sundown. There's a lot of things in there. What's your favorite Bruce Campbell movie? Oh man, Mind Warp. Mind Warp. Mind Warp. It's the one you haven't seen. I feel like he's trying to sell me this VHS. No, not at all. I think that's what he's trying. It just came. It came at that time where I was happy. He was really trying to pull a real character out. Yeah, um, I love everything about it. I like the production design. I like those kind of post-apocalyptic films yeah. that are real gritty without a bunch of visual flair bullshit. Um, the, the, it's really graphic. Uh, Angus Scrim is in it. He was a hero of mine, especially at that time. Uh, I, I, it sucks that he's gone from us, but we still have Bruce Campbell. Uh, I don't know. It's, I hope it's, Bruce Campbell lives as long as Angus Scrim. Yeah, fucking live. Awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah. And Angus Scrim was li- fucking old in this movie he's going and still functioning as of just a few years ago really yeah you know he's still doing conventions and shit but you right. can find mine warp on blu-ray dvd and uh you know obviously this vhs i have in front of me but uh, that's probably, my favorite probably youtube i hope so mine's basic army of darkness i mean i saw it on oh, tv it's, it's my yeah. first introduction to bruce campbell i watched it all the fucking time as a kid still appreciate it as an adult it's the fucking best all the one-liners and stuff it's perfect um, for Maybe me, it, too, for me it's Army of Darkness. Yeah, well. shit. Just, I'm answer. sorry. It's just because that was the that was the first one I saw, and like I said, I was, the, the drive the drive in experience yeah. with that one, man. Like just seeing it and like just having my mind blown that this was a movie that I'm watching in the theater. Yeah, and my mom's really pissed and she wants to go home because it's after midnight. But I want to watch this movie again. Yeah, I'm changing my answer. Man with the screaming brain. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to fix? I mean, yeah. What's funny is though that one of the first bonding experiences that David and I ever had it was I came over to his apartment and we put up this four panel fucking massive subway uh, poster, subway size poster of Army Darkness in his apartment. I was like, I like this guy. Yeah. That's, that's had to true. hang it somewhere, <laughs> right? I have still got it. That doesn't sell me on a person. I can tell you that a lot of people have posters. Ted Shit. Bundy probably had posters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess we're, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. We're gonna, thank you guys. Uh, this was a fun episode. Um, like I said, this is a person who has been a part of our lives and hopefully will until hope I die before he does. God, I hope you do too. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Uh, you know, the, you know, the drill to find us on YouTube, please like, and subscribe. Find us on Apple podcast, uh, Google podcast, anchor FM, cast box, Spotify, tune in overcast podcast, addict, radio, public pocket cast and breaker. Bye. <laughs> Break. <laughs>